Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com. And today I am just really excited to share with you. I have a guest with me and she is a breast cancer survivor, and she has done so much research into this topic that she's going to come and share some of that research. And the research we're going to talk about today is what is feeding estrogen tumors? What is feeding, what's causing all of the quote rare cancers to become no longer rare? What is actually going on? What are the risk factors for cancer that you may not be aware of? So we're going to share that with you. We're also going to explain how God designed a filtering system to protect us. And sometimes it's not working well because of what we are doing. And then we're going to end with what are your five takeaways that you can start doing today to prevent cancer in your body. So I just want to thank you for joining me. Be sure and hit the like, subscribe, the bell. You know how to do the drill. And I'm always honored to read your comments and just to hear what's going on in your life, how God is touching your life. And remember, I am here to share with you God's recipe for excellent health. Three ingredients. One is to help you be confident in the kitchen. That's helpful. Number two is confident with your health, understanding how God designed you, how he created your body to thrive, to live abundantly. But most importantly, the third ingredient is to understand and experience how much God loves you. He has loved you from the moment of conception. His love is everlasting. He's, he will, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And he's always waiting to have a relationship with you. So let's welcome Jenny Brandt back to our video here. I am so excited to have her with us today. And Jenny, welcome. It was good seeing you at that our conference a month ago and running into you and just, just hearing what's going on in your life. And then to be able to join this time together again and talk about your success story. And that's what I like. It's your success story. Yeah, cancer came into your life and caught you by surprise. And we're going to talk about that. So welcome, Jenny. I'm so glad to have you. Thanks for being here. And I'm glad to share what God has revealed to me so that I could not only get back on top, but that so I could help other people prevent cancer in the first place. You really have a mission. And I like how you really take it on this mission and how you reach out to people all the time and people reach out to you and you're there for them. I think that's so special. Well, it's just, it's my way of paying back because God was there for me and he helped to pull back the curtain on cancer for me. And I'm very grateful for that. I was praying that he would lead me and guide me and he did. So I'm certainly willing to share that with other people. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I, I appreciate that in you and just your whole spirit about the whole thing. So give us just a short synopsis for those who didn't see you on our previous video that we did about cancer and we interviewed you before. So just give us a real short introduction to your story. Okay. I was diagnosed with an aggressive and estrogen fed breast cancer just four months after my mother died from breast cancer. I was known as a health nut. And when I sat down with the doctors as they were giving me this terrible diagnosis, they looked at me and they said, we don't understand. We can tell you, you know, we knew why my mother had breast cancer because she had been taking estrogen hormones past menopause up to age 82. Hmm. But I did not have any of the risk factors as listed by the American Cancer Society for the breast cancer I got. And then they did extensive genetic testing thinking it was genetic. It was not. So having nothing to hang my hat on to say, this is what caused my cancer, I went on a quest to discover what caused my cancer, number one, because if I don't know what caused it, how do I prevent it from coming back? Exactly. And number two, what I could do to lessen the side effects in, of the, all the treatments and complement what my doctors were doing. And yeah. I, did very, I did very well. I mean, you rarely see someone going through the worst chemo known to mankind, snow skiing, hiking, doing the Cooper River Bridge run. I walked it, but it's 10 kilometers. You don't see people doing that during chemo, but all of it worked 
for my good. Because again, God has given us a, a wonderful immune system. And what I was learning is how I could get in sync with how he, how he created my body and my immune system to work, to overcome this beast that had come upon me. Yeah. And it is, it can be a beast too. So, okay. So let's dive in. You wanted to share with us, what are the endocrine hormone disruptors? What should people be looking out for? Because you had all the testing done. It wasn't the usual reasons why you got cancer. And then you discovered what, tell us what you discovered. Okay. What I discovered, it was clearly God intervening because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known to discover this, but at the end of my chemotherapy, I went back to my integrated medical doctor and asked her to test my heavy metals levels because I knew I was high in lead and I wanted to now work on that because I know that's not good in relationship with cancer. So when the results came back, it showed that all my levels were up, mercury, aluminum, lead was about the same. And so she told me to get an infrared sauna that I had so much plus all the chemotherapy residue that I needed to either join a sauna club or just get a home sauna. And so my husband and I got a home sauna. We got the home sauna and with it came a phone call from the sauna company asking me if I would be in a clinical trial study they were doing with the sauna. They would test my levels before I began using the sauna and then every month afterwards for a year. Well, when the first test results came back, I thought they were gonna test my heavy metals, which I already knew I had. No, they were testing these toxic chemical levels I did not know could be tested and I did not know was in my body. And 15 of the 20 they tested were in the red zone. There's the green zone, which most people definitely have a lot in the green zone, hopefully. There's the yellow zone, the caution zone. I had 15 in the red zone. And I began to learn that a lot of these were endocrine disrupting hormones, parabens, phylates, pesticides. And what was interesting was I had my husband tested. He joined the clinical trial. He did not have the high levels that I had. And I consider us to be two pigs eating out of the same trough in the same pig pen. And we're doing the same things. And he's getting more of the chemical residue from doing the yard work than I am. Yet my levels beat him hands down. So that got me to thinking, okay, what's going on here? His filtering systems given by God must be working better than mine. When we okay. go on a walk, he sweats quicker than I do. That's a good thing. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's really itemize these toxins that you have identified as being extremely dangerous for everyone. And you you were talking earlier before we started this, especially for men. Um, what are those main top toxins we need to be watching out for? Parabens and they're in almost everything. And then there's phylates, which are plasticizers. There's BPH, BPA, all of the, you know, plastic residue things that we use every day that I no longer use, of course. And then there's, well, you've also got the estrogens that they're putting into our food to make the chicken and the beef produce more milk and meat. Right. And so you've got all these things coming into play. You know, fire retardant was found high in my body. And, you know, just a lot of pesticides such as glyphosate and one of the Agent Orange pesticides. So according to Dr. Stephanie Seneff at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one of their major researchers, glyphosate and some of these pesticides are endocrine disrupting hormones. That means they mimic estrogen. And these things can raise your estrogen levels. The doctors are looking for why my estrogen levels are so high. I was tested several years before I was diagnosed with cancer and my estrogen levels were perfectly fine. So nothing about it made sense until I began to realize that it's not just the estrogen in my body. It's the estrogens coming from the outside in. And a Canadian cancer coach at a convention told me, she said, Jenny, we live in an estrogenic world. 
And that's when I began to realize that these estrogens were coming in from our water, from our foods through pesticides. Mm -hmm. They're coming in through our cosmetics and cleaning products. They're coming through our skin because your skin is like a sponge that absorbs these things and it goes directly into your bloodstream. So when I began to realize this and these, you know, here seeing is believing. When you look at a piece of paper that shows the chemicals that are in your body and they're in the red zone, that woke me up to realize I had to live differently and put a plan into action so that I could lower these chemicals that were coming into my body. And the first thing I did was cut off the tap water and began drinking water that was filtered. Okay. So let's, let's dive into this. So you've identified what we need to watch out for. You identify the glyphosate, the pesticides, which included the agent orange. And most of us are like, no, that was during Vietnam. They don't realize, no, it's, it's actually being sprayed on our crops. There's a lot of things that are being done to our crops. The glyphosate is definitely something we need to watch out for. And I have a video out there about glyphosate, the fire retardants, where are they, where do you think you were exposed to that, to that the most? They're put in a lot of clothing, especially clothing you wear at night and sheets yes. and mattresses. And so, you know, I have changed out to 100% cotton, organic sheets and mattress cover. You know, I'm yep. going to eventually change my mattress to an organic mattress, but we haven't done that yet. Yeah. But everything I wear at night now, because you detox, your body detoxes at night. It is an organic cotton nighty and underwear, things like that, I now wear organic and 100% cotton so that they can breathe. So yeah, it was coming in everywhere, you know? All right. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. So now let's move into the five filtering systems that God designed. God knew we were going to be coming into stress. We're going to have environmental issues. God designed our body to take on the enemy, to take on the enemy, however it comes through our food, our air, our clothing. What are those five systems that you recognize as God's filtering agent for our body? Well, the number one is your skin is your largest detox organ. And that's why it's so important that you hydrate and that you sweat. And then you've got your liver, you've got your lungs, your colon, and your kidneys. And none of these organs work as well unless you are properly hydrating and exercising on a regular basis. And of course, when you eat lots of plants, that helps to move a lot of toxins out of your body because of all the antioxidants that are in those plants and the phytochemicals. So these filtering systems, we want them working well. And what I've learned is if I eat more, more plants, I know you preach that a lot. The more plants I eat, the more fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, then it's gonna help me to fight these, this chemical buildup. And some mm -hmm. things like mushrooms actually lower your estrogen load. So there are, and flax seeds lower your, your estrogen load. Right. So now I'm eating things that lower the estrogen load. I am stopping so much estrogen from coming into my body. And I'm making sure that those filtering systems are working well by what I'm doing. And I have to make myself sweat. That's why I now have a sauna. A sauna would be wonderful for everyone. But some people like me need it more than others because I don't sweat as easy. Yeah, good point. So just to help people understand, we have estrogen receptors in our body. It's kind of like the parking spaces at a shopping mall. And our body is designed to take in natural estrogen from the foods and our body also makes estrogen. So when those park spark, let me say it right. Parking places are filled with a natural or a self-made estrogen. Then our body knows exactly what to do with it. It has the right balance. It's homeostasis in your body. You, you do well, but when we have a chemical, a synthetic estrogen, it's a xenoestrogen. It comes in and it takes that parking space that was meant for a natural one, but it is 1000 times stronger. So now you have these, you know, alarms going off in your body saying, whoa, whoa. And you're very overstimulated. Your, your hormones are overstimulated. The numbers are going off. And, but if you aren't paying attention and some of the symptoms are, you're pretty much, it can be asymptomatic until it becomes a trouble. 
until it becomes just a, a chaotic system. And I talk about this in the nutrition manual, the treasures of health nutrition manual. I explain the difference between a natural estrogen and a xenoestrogen. So xeno is a synthetic, it's a chemical form, which is what everything you listed, the pesticides, the glyphosate, the fire retardants, the BPA, the plastic bottles, the phthalates, the mercury, it's all chemically induced synthetic. And it overstimulates our system, therefore causes havoc in our cells, which therefore leads to tumor growth. And would you agree with that? Yes, but I had no idea until I got cancer and had to research and take a deep dive. No idea at all. I was asymptomatic. I wasn't yeah. showing a high estrogen load from my own body. So it took me a while to uncover that this was not the only cause of my cancer, but it was a major player. It was a contributor by all means, because it starts to interrupt the normal pattern of your body, which there causes an imbalance, which then makes you more susceptible to other things contributing to the cancer growth. And when you see that, you know, the 90% of the men that are getting breast cancer, I mean, yeah, they're estrogen fed. Yeah, and you're going, totally. That's not right. That's not supposed to be. That's not the way God you know, God didn't make a man to have that much estrogen, only a small amount. So right. you realize that there is something here. And I think what really hit me over the head was after I did all this research, my oncologist read my uh, book and he said his favorite chapters were the three on toxic load and how to reduce it. He said, I'm beginning to see as an oncologist that this is a major player in all these estrogen fed cancers today. And then my OBGYN a month later tells me the same thing. Yes. So the medical world is beginning to see that these endocrine disrupting hormones or xenoestrogens are a real problem. In my case, it was a major problem. You can actually have none of the risk factors, none of the genetics, and boom, this was driving my cancer. It was. And and I always think the cancer society is always the last to admit to a problem. We, I've been teaching this for over 15 years. It's like, this isn't new, but okay. I'm glad they're catching on. So I'm happy about that. Well, they are mentioning that it might be a problem. So right. breastcancer.org is being more <laughs> emphatic about saying it. And they're saying, watch these estrogens. They're saying it yeah. is a problem. They're, they're more emphatic about it. So interesting note, and then we're going to move on is every one of these contributing factors is man-made chemicals, bottom line. So I always say we can never improve on what God has given us. When he says I, he created, and this is good, everything he created that is good, that he's called good for us, which is our three principles that we follow. It's always going to be a blessing to your body. But when we give out or give in to the other, you know, you know, interesting things like, oh, well, this is new. I don't need new. I need proven and proven is only what God's given us. So um, interesting. Well, when he says in Genesis 1 29, I have given you these plants as food. I yeah. mean, what a blessing those plants are. And I think that's the greatest thing I've learned in my cancer journey. And that's why you and I just click together mm -hmm. so much is that I've learned that our bodies were not made to eat all these processed and chemicalized no. foods. Mm -mm. They were made to eat whole plants and he graciously gifted us with these plants and they promote healing and nourishment in the body. All right. I appreciate that. So let's go on to, I added to my notes. I'm now at, so I'm at seven. Here's the seven things everyone needs to pay attention to. These are seven takeaways that we need to pay attention to that everyone can do. So I'm going to list a few and I'll leave some for you. So number one, it's, you talked about it. We didn't label it as such, but it's fiber. Okay. Fiber is our body is like you mentioned, it detoxifies a lot at night. So in the morning you should drink some, a lot of water. And then by 10, you should be in the bathroom and your body should be eliminating as many toxins as possible. And so we have to have good fiber. Well, that's going to come from cruciferous vegetables. That's going to come from our seeds. You talked about flaxseed. There are so many foods that feed fiber. And I have numerous videos out there and teachings in all of my books about fiber. You have to have fiber in your diet. If you're requiring to have Metamucil or Miralax to have a bowel movement, then you do not have enough fiber in your diet. Just go eat some more of those power five salads that I've taught you. So fiber is number one. 
Um, number two is eat organic. And people say, well, it's too expensive. Well, then grow your own food or find a farmer and work with the farmer. I have a farmer, I have to drive about 40 minutes to go work on his farm in exchange for food, but he grows 100% organic and he has a very well-producing farm. But I will do that in my busy schedule because I need the organic produce. All right, so that's number two. And then you talked about it. So share with us about the sauna. It's important to sweat every single day. You can do the, that by getting on a bike or walking. But for people like me that don't sweat as easy, the sauna is a wonderful tool to really get that core temperature up and sweat from deeper within. And it's one of the best ways, as my integrative doctor told me, after all the chemotherapy and all the chemicals in my body were found, the best way to get toxins out is through a sauna. Yeah. So a sauna is a great tool. And, and of course, if that sauna is going to work well, you've got to hydrate. And I mm -hmm. exercise before I get in the sauna. So I've got those systems kind of pumping and working. And then I get into the sauna. And how many minutes a day or how many days a week do you do the sauna? When I had a high toxic load, I did it three times a week. And, you know, you have to check with your doctor uh, because some people in certain situations, they may tell you, you know, once a week or limit your time to this amount and, and this temperature. But I did it three times a week. Now I do it one to two times a week just for maintenance. My husband does it just to prevent the chemicals from building up. But the greatest thing you can do is stop drinking tap water and drink filtered water because a lot of these chemicals get into the water table and you cannot expect the water company to get all, we live in a toxic world, you can't expect yeah. them to get all of these toxins and plastics out. So it's consider it your responsibility to filter the water at your own home. Exactly. Yeah. So I will put a link to our the water pitchers that I use, you can, it's got a whole house filter. It's got your refrigerator filters. It's got the water pitcher filter. You know, I like it because it is and it. They'll show you on the website, all of the agricultural runoff that they can filter out the fluoride, you know, and when you realize if you're on city water, even though it was purified to a certain percentage before it was then delivered to you, it reaccumulates bacteria. Yeah. And it also grabs a lot of the heavy metals in a lot of the pipe systems. And you can read about that on the NSF website as well. So it's not just Annette telling you that it's actually very true. So no matter how you're getting your water, if it's from a well, which is what we are on, or if you're getting it from a purified system from the county or the government, then you still need to filter that water. It is so imperative to your health, especially if you have babies and you're mixing formula please, please purify that water first and never heat in a microwave. That's just a side note. Okay. So we've given four fiber, eat organic, the infrared sauna, just a side note on the saunas. You can get just small individual ones that kind of collapse in your, put them in your closet. Those are really just as effective as the, the big, nice, beautiful ones. Um, so you can get any kind as long as they are an infrared sauna and then purify your water. All right. So three left. And that would be, what about skincare products? Have you changed those? Oh, absolutely. I have a whole uh, part of my book where I talk about the swaps that I have made. And I, you know, the parabens and the phylates show a lot in our cosmetics. And so I simply swapped out to cleaner cosmetics. I use pure coconut oil on my skin. I learned to read labels. And I would challenge everyone to do that. Your shampoos, all these things oh, we're okay. using have these things in them. Mm -hmm. And that's right next to your brain, you know? So I had to swap everything out. Some things I make at home now, including laundry detergent. But the point is, you know, you, you've just got to swap these things out and yeah. go to cleaner, cleaner, you know, sources. Because whatever touches your skin, 60 to 70% of it goes right into your bloodstream. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I will put some links down below for a deodorant that I found. I mean, you can make your own. Um, I'm just not always in the mood to make my own of everything. I'm very busy. So uh, there are times I will, and there are other times like, no, just give me. So I will put links down below to um, some deodorant. I have a skincare company that I love. Um, I don't, 
I'll, I'll share a diff couple different companies that I've tested and I think they're good. I put links to those down below. And then you mentioned the cleaners. So that's number six. So home cleaners, you can totally do this with just vinegar, baking soda. You can clean your entire home with that. Um, again, I don't always like to make up my own and I don't like the smell of vinegar. So I'll put a link to the company that I have, that I use that is just very economical and very safe. And that's, that's important. A friend very of mine just... Yeah. A friend of mine just sent me a post from her girlfriend. She, my friend trains dogs. She's a dog trainer. And one of her dogs that she was training died because the cleaning cloth that had Windex on it was dropped on the floor and the dog kind of chewed on the cloth. Cause it's kind of still a puppy. It's very young. The dog died. The dog died. And it was a big the dog. dogs are more susceptible than we are because they're mm -hmm. less, less body weight <laughs> to all these chemicals in the home. And the EPA even says that the most chemicals are found right inside the walls of your home. They so, are. Yeah. So your pets, your pets are highly susceptible to cancers nowadays, as long as you, and as long also with your young children. All right. And then the last one I wanted to touch on, and you mentioned it earlier, and that's beta glucans. And I'll do more videos about this in the future, but what we are seeing with, this isn't new, it's just kind of new to me because I didn't understand it or know it long ago, but even in Japan, they use beta glucans as chemotherapy treatment. So, and your doctor, Dr. Elliot, he was brilliant in treating breast cancer people and recognized for you to take the mushroom based beta glucan, right? Well, it was my integrative doctor, but in my book, because he writes commentary throughout my book, he talked about the importance of mushroom supplements in mm -hmm. fighting breast cancer in my book. He recommended that to all of his patients. Yeah. So to help people understand, so you have a cell in your body and the, when you have a cell that is a, a disrupting cell, so it's a cancer cell, your body goes on attack. So it will start attaching all these antibodies to it, to, to attack it, to try to kill it. But cancer cells are very strong. They're very powerful. So if you are taking beta glucan, even on a daily basis as preventative, you actually create kind of a gel on top of that cell so that the antibodies are more effective. And so it's very effective for preventing cancers because we get carcinogens in our body almost on a daily basis. And when we can have our cells being very well armed and ready, you know, it will get rid of it. And it's not, it's going to, your body's going to say, don't worry, Annette, I've got this. We took care of it. It's not even going to interrupt your day. That's what we want to happen. But when we do get cancer, they're recognizing that when you take beta glucans during your chemotherapy or your radiation, it makes it more effective on the tumor cells and it protects your healthy cells. So some patients even go through treatment without losing any hair because it protected the healthy cells being on a beta glucan wow. therapy in addition to the chemotherapy or the radiation. I'm for anything you can mix with the chemotherapy to make it work better and to possibly use less chemotherapy yeah. because it makes the chemotherapy more powerful. And I think that's the future of cancer treatment that I hope we'll eventually get to in this country using less chemo, not more chemo. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that, even to the point of helping as many people as possible not get cancer in the first place, which is my goal. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, and but just waking up, you had to wake up to this. You were thought you were doing everything right, but there was an area that you weren't aware of. And that's my goal is to help people come become aware of what's happening and how you can be preventative. And I highly, my heart goes out to young moms who are raising young kids please, please, please make sure you're doing non-GMO in your foods. So non-GMO means no glyphosate is supposed to be sprayed on any of that food. Um, so be aware of that, uh, pay attention to it. So we've talked about a lot. We talked about what is causing cancer that people may not be aware of. We've talked about the filtering system that God has given us. And we've given people seven steps as a takeaway on how they can be preventative. So we hit it all, Jenny. Thank you very much. We did. And let me point them to my uh, cancer prevention site at www.jennybrant.com, where I constantly put out new information as well. In addition to the book, Unleash Your God-Given Healing, Eight Steps to Prevent and Survive Cancer. What I learned from the School of Hard Knocks. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. And the more you can teach other people through that, you know, you have been such a blessing to many people. And that's what I love about working with you and just having this time with you. So thank you, Jenny, for this information. I look forward to having more videos in the future and maybe we'll get together again at the next conference we end up at together. So I hope so. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching this video and letting us share with you God's recipe for excellent health. Remember, he's given us a filtering system, yet chemicals and synthetics, they overstimulate. And so we have to be very careful, very mindful of that, but also be aware of other things that are going on in our world that may help that may interfere with you understanding how much God loves you. So if you are unsure about how much God loves you, just ask him, just pray, dear Lord, teach me your love, show me your love. Because many people are afraid of what has happened in their past makes it so they are in unable to have it, that love or experience that love. Remember, he has loved you from the moment of conception. He has loved you. He has a purpose for you that is more than you could ever imagine. So say this with me, God loves me, because when you say that it increases your T cell count, your immune system is stronger, and it just helps you to understand that love. Thanks for watching and letting me share this with you. And until next time, be sure and hit the like, subscribe, and the bell. And I look forward to reading your comments. Have a blessed day.